individual choice in America. Aggressive. Last story. My oldest son is 32 years old. But he was about five. And at five years old, he and I were watching television together. About December 15th. If you've ever had children about that age watching TV on December 15th, you'll know that most of the commercials are what? Sure, they're all toys. Back then, back then, the toy of choice was a rubber man that you could pull on called Mr. Stretch, later evolving into Stretch Armstrong for $19.95 from Mattel before they started painting them with Chinese paint. They were okay to buy. And so he's watching television and then he sees this particular ad and he comes back to me and says, Dad, like a five-year-old does, says, Dad, I would really like to have a Mr. Stretch. And I said, I'll tell you what, Mal, we'll talk about it in a few minutes. Okay? And he said, okay. And he goes back to watching TV. Now, for those of you that raised your hand and have had or have now a five-year-old, you know exactly what happened in 60 seconds. In 60 seconds, he's right back at me. And he's got me now. And he says, Dad, and he may not have said it quite like this, but he meant it quite like this. Go out and buy me. A Mr. Stretch right now. And I said, Mallory, you do that again. I told you I was going to get with you afterwards. You do that again, and I'm going to spank you and put you in your room. Corporal punishment and incarceration. <laughs> now, my wife never liked that. She said, that's not the way you do it. She said, you didn't read the book. The book being Dr. Spock and a couple others. And I reminded her that my dad never read the book. <laughs> so I did what I said his third time in. I spanked him and I put him in his room. And now little kids have this ability. I can hear him crying. Little kids have this ability. They think if they can't see you, that in fact you can't see them. So he backs out of the room with his hands on his head. And he's backing out. And he finds me. And he takes his hands off his eyes, big brown eyes, tears streaming down his face, big shock of blonde hair. The blonde hair always bothered me, but I never said anything. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's the truth. It did bother me. <laughs> and he looked up at me and he said, and these were his exact words. He said, Dad, I love you. And I want a Mr. <laughs> Stretch. I want you to be like Mal. I don't want you to be any less than he was. I want you to be committed because you believe in the benefits of what this organization does for you. I want you to go out and find other people that feel the way you do. And I want you to use the one talent that you have above all else, and that is your respectability in the realtor nation. When you tap somebody on the shoulder and you say, do it for me the first time. If you don't like it the first time, if you don't think it's worthwhile the first time, then I'll let somebody else ask you. Do it for me. And they'll do it. They will absolutely do it. You will preserve the kind of home buying and selling process that has made us the greatest nation in the world, where almost 70% of the people own their own home. You try and wedge somebody out of their own home. You try and tell them what to do. You try and tell them you're taking away their rights, their ability, and their benefits from their home. You can do that to folks that don't own, but you can't do it to people who are committed, invested, and own in this country. 
So I'm asking you to do more than what you do. Yes, I'm appreciative that you're invested. I'm really happy that you give. I'm every bit as elated as anyone could be that you're part of the program. But I need you to go out and find more folks. There's an aphorism, and I forgot who, who, who spoke about it, but I, I use it a lot. It says, the thing that makes me the happiest in the world is when I do something anonymously. And then somebody finds out. The reality is, when you do things anonymously, somebody always finds out. Somebody always recognizes the value of your actions. I have been, <clears throat> I've been in this business for 40 years. It's fed my family. It's educated my kids. It's provided me with a reasonable existence. I can't imagine wanting to do anything else. I can't imagine investing in any other form of a business than what I'm in today. I think that I create that part of America that makes us really great. And I know that that's what you can do too. So help me, help Jared, help the rest of the folks, including Vicki and your president-elect, Ron Phipps. Invest in the kind of energy and the kind of commitment by going out and finding people just like yourself and ask them. I love you. God bless you. Thank you so much.